It was tournament time and I got my bull shined. I gotta go, 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 go. Get exposed, 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 exposed. Get the boat, man, it's time to go. Grab your baits and fishing poles. Fill the tank and then hit the road till you're in. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Off the Water podcast with Kay McBride. I'm your host, Kay McBride, and Dad's not here with me today like he normally is, but we do have a special guest with us, Mr. Alex Rudd. How are you doing today? I'm good, buddy. I'm good. Glad to be here with you. I'm, I uh, I love a good podcast. I love a good conversation, so I'm looking forward to getting to know you and, and answering some questions. It's going to be fun. Yes, sir. Um, so one thing we do on this podcast is a top five lakes to fish. We've done it with every guest we've had. Nice. Uh, so let's go ahead and start it off. What's your top five lakes to fish? Top five lakes to fish. So, uh, man, that's a good one. That is a good one. My number one is probably going to have to be Lake Huron in Michigan. Right. Um, absolutely phenomenal place to go fishing you know i got my buddy mr benjamin nowak lives up there in michigan he uh introduced me to fishing up there and, and doing all that man and like honestly michigan in may is is it's magical like it really is it's, it's crazy it's just crazy how many fish you can catch the size of fish you can catch it's such a cool place and not only can you go and catch like giant smallmouth but you can go you know inland and like fish shallow, you know, and like here on, you know, back in the bays and stuff like that and catch a giant largemouth. So really awesome place. Uh, number two is probably going to be Watts Bar here in Tennessee. Um, Watts Bar is a phenomenal lake. You got everybody, the world's going to get to see it here this year. You know, MLF's coming here. Um, it's one of those kind of been a hidden gem. You know, it's the next Lake Chickamauga. I really believe that. Um, and so everybody's going to get to see it here before too long. But really awesome place. My favorite place to go fish around here. Number three it's probably going to have to be Pickwick Lake in Alabama. Yeah. Um, it's freak factory. You know, Pickwick is just like the fish are always biting. They're always biting right. You can catch giant smallmouths and catch a giant largemouth. It's awesome. Uh, number four is probably going to be Gunnersville. I love Gunnersville, man. It's awesome. Such a cool lake. I've been down there a lot. You know, it's just a, it's such like a cool lake just to go. I, I think there's so much like uh, history around it. You know what I mean? That when you're there, it just feels special. You know, like even when it sucks, it's still good because you're on Gunnersville. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, then number five is actually going to be kind of a weird one. It's probably going to be off the wall. Maybe not very many people have heard of this lake, but it's going to be Norris Lake um, here in Tennessee. It's real close to my yeah. house giant reservoir it is an, an enormous lake as far as like you know how it sprawls out mm -hmm. and um it's got two rivers that flow into it it's deep it's clear it's got a lot of really quality fish in it and honestly it's one of those places it's tough you know and you're going to struggle to catch fish but if you can figure it out you can have a chance to just have a phenomenal day and it's one of my favorite lakes because i grew up on it it's a great fun lake i actually went out there today and fished around a little bit so yeah, yeah man that's my that's my top five. From my experiences, that's probably be my top five kind of right off my head. Yeah, I've been seeing on your Instagram, am, am I allowed to say this? The monster sure, bass. You whatever, yeah, you uh, say whatever you want to, man. Yeah, I seen y'all yeah. down there in Florida. Yeah. I've been following along. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, monster bass, yeah, that was a fun trip, man. We went down there. We didn't catch a whole lot. Um, we went out one day and, and had a chance of it, a bunch of big fish. Like, it was one of those things, we got like six bites all day long. Um, I lost one that was probably eight plus. Uh, the guy that we were fishing with lost one that had eyes the size of quarters. She she was huge. And uh, he got a seven pounder in the boat, and then I caught a couple little, you know, like pound, pound and a half. There's nothing special. But, man, we had the chance. But, yeah, that was a fun trip. We got some really cool content done. All that will be coming out real soon. It's going to be centered around the boxes, obviously, and teaching people how to fish. Um, but hopefully next year – going into like late winter, kind of like what we're in right now, I'm going to go down there and spend a couple of weeks and, and go try to catch some true giants and figure out the whole yeah. Florida fishing thing. So, yeah. Are they in the spawn right now? Like, is that how y'all was catching them down there? So actually all the fish we caught were post spawn and all mm. the lakes we were on, they were done. Now nice. we got hooked up with a guide while we were down there. And he said that, 
um, there's probably gonna be like another wave of fish come up and start mm -hmm. spawning. He said, but like that big initial wave, like we can catch the true blue, like freaky giants had already mm -hmm. come up, done their thing and, and gone back down. That seven pounder he caught was actually completely post spawn. She had like no belly left. She was just giant. Yeah, because I know um, up here in Arkansas where I'm at, we had a tournament on Lake Greeson, and they yeah. were all pre-spawn. And yeah. we caught, we only caught one, and it was up shallow because that's a, yeah. all we know how to fish. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we didn't catch – there were some – there were some giants way in. On that, oh, that yeah, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're getting in that time of year, man. You know, March for me is like the time of year that you block the whole entire schedule off and you go fishing. Yeah. Because it's going to be the time of year when you're going to catch a giant, especially where we're at. You know, when down here in the south, you know, that kind of mid – I call it the mid-south. I mean, because, you know, Tennessee, Arkansas, we're still considered the south. It's just we're a little bit further north than Alabama and the rest of them. And so, you know, our spawn happens in April, May. But, like, man, that pre-spawn, that March bite, I've caught some of the biggest bass and the biggest bags in my life in March. And it's, like, yeah. such a great time to go fishing. Yeah, down here in Arkansas, we don't have much smallmouth fishing. I think the only smallmouth yeah. fishing I've done is up at Greer's Ferry up near yeah. Missouri. Yeah. And so I, I'm i really not familiar with all that. I mean, yeah. I watch your channel and see how y'all do it, and it doesn't yeah. seem too different from largemouth. Yeah. I mean, we'll, yeah. which one would you rather catch? Man, I'm dude largemouth all the, all the way. Like everybody else always asks me a question. There is nothing like smacking a four- or five-pounder and like seeing that big head come up, you know what I mean? Smallmouth yeah. are fun, dude. I mean, they fight hard, you know, they jump, they're crazy, you know, they're just absolutely nuts. But for me, there's nothing like smacking a big large mouth. Like, even when I go to Michigan and like we're specifically mm -hmm. trying to catch those giant smallmouth, I always tell Ben, I'm like, hey, can we like go catch a few big large mouth? And he's like, yeah, yeah, sure. So we'll go up there and he'll let me catch a few. And like, I satisfy the itch and then we go yeah. smallmouth fishing, you know? So, yeah, Greer's Ferry, it's weird because like, the boat rent, the main boat rent that you put in at, there's a, this long bridge. And on yeah. one side of it is smallmouth, all smallmouth. Huh. And then on yeah. the other side, it's all largemouth. So that's crazy. You, just, you pick your poison on which side you want to fish. Yeah. Um, but I know one tournament I was fishing with my partner, and we not even 30 yards on the other side of the bridge, and we couldn't catch a single smallmouth. It's crazy. It's all largemouth. It's crazy that we get a little bit of that here like where you'll have like those kind of especially like the river stuff you know like there's a point in the river where you just don't see largemouth anymore it's almost all smallmouth the same thing you know, there's a point in the river where you get so far down and it's all largemouth and no smallmouth but man i mean my experience with smallmouth is they live in all the same places as largemouth do but you'll find like a predominance of either smallmouth or largemouth you know what I mean? it just depends speaking of different different kinds of fish yeah. I know we love bass and all yeah. that, but would you ever crappie fish? Because that's, that's kind of what we do. Yeah, dude. I, I would totally, totally. So my papa is like crappie fishing fiend, all right? Like he's the man, right? He goes and does it. Um, I've always wanted to like get better at it. And I actually yeah. – this year kind of one of my – on my list of things to do is to branch out from just bass fishing. I mean, obviously, dude, it's, it's what I do. I've always bass fished. I'm going to keep yeah. bass fishing. I'm not going to stop. But, I mean, I would love to get, like, better at catching crappie and better at catching trout just so, like, when we're in those weird in-between seasons, you know what I mean, like where it sucks to try to go catch a fish in the middle of August, I'll go trout fishing in some river. Or when it's the dead of February, I'll go drop on some crappies on a tree and catch them. But, yeah, no, listen, if I can eat it, I I'm down yeah. for it. Like, so crappie or – I can eat a crappie, so I'm yeah. down to catch it. Yeah, Dad, he loves crappie fishing. He says it's the best, best eating fish he knows. He yeah. pours up lead heads, and he does all that, and so he's kind of into it. Yeah. Um, him and his yeah. buddies, they're called That's the Paperlet Mafia, and I yeah. got a shirt <laughs> That's awesome. down here somewhere. Paperlet Mafia. But, yeah. That's great. So, okay. So. All right. I have one question that's not fishing, and then we can get into overrated and underrated. Let's do it. What's your What's your favorite Marvel movie? Because I know my you love Marvel. Oh, dude, I love Marvel. Love it. Um, my favorite. Oh, that's a good question. I, I have to say, and this is probably going to be like cliche, like people are going to be like, oh, it's a scapegoat. But really, dude, Endgame was it. Yeah. Like, it was the culmination of it all, right? Like, 
And I, when I was a kid, man, I was so into Marvel. Like I, I read Marvel comics. I love Marvel. Watched mm-hmm. all the cartoons, you know. And like, man, I'm younger than you, or older than you. Obviously, you're yeah. a lot younger than me. So you miss like the awesomeness that was like not late 1990s X Men cartoons. Like it was so yeah. awesome. So I was all into it, right? But no, man, in game, just in game, just the culmination of how it all came together to see the end of what was essentially my childhood from 14, you know, 13, 14 years old, all brought together into that one movie. Man, yeah. it's like I laughed. I cr- I literally cried. I grown man cried when Iron Man died. I just did. I mean, like there was a tear ran down my face. Bethany, my wife, she looked at me. She's like, you're completely crazy. I said, yeah, I probably am. I probably am. Yeah. But se- like close second to that one, is going to be Black Panther. The Black Panther was that amazing. Yeah. Amazing. But I'm really looking forward to what they got coming out. Like the yeah. new Marvel shows have been awesome. I'm looking forward to Moon Knight and Doctor Strange, man. That new Doctor Strange movie is going to be mm-hmm. epic. Yeah, I'm so ready for that. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's going to be great. Think, I think there's like two types of Marvel movies. There's post-Endgame okay. and then there's pre-Endgame. Like yep. the whole Avengers and then like the yeah. whole stuff after – so yeah. I can't just have one favorite yeah, yeah. movie. Yeah. So my favorite like pre in game has been Iron Man three. Yeah. That that's man, I that's awesome. That's my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then post in game, mm, I haven't seen Eternals yet. I, so I don't know. It's okay. You'll like it. it? You'll like yeah. it. It, it. It's just a lot. Like, it's one of those you'll get done with, and I don't want to spoil anything for anybody. I don't want to spoil it. But you'll hit it, and you'll be like, oh, wait a second. Like, how is this, yeah. like, in uh, – how does this even work in? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's weird. But have you seen Spider-Man, the new Spider-Man? I, I have not. I was invited Dude. twice, and I did, had, didn't get the chance. I'm not going to ruin it for you. <laughs> Absolutely epic. Probably – the f- the most fun I've had in a Marvel movie in a long time. Like yeah. th- this one, it you're gonna love it because I think all these movies moving forward is gonna like blow open the doors of bringing it all together. Not just like the Marvel we know now, but all the other Marvel stuff is gonna get to come in with it. Like it's gonna be awesome. Yeah. So, well, since I haven't seen the new Spider Man, it has to be that Shang Chi movie, The Ten Rings. That, Shang Chi's awesome. Yeah, that's an awesome yeah. movie. Yes. Yeah, that was fun, dude. I, I really, like, I had a ton of fun watching that one, too. It's, dude, it's just, yeah. I love them. Like, I love Marvel. Mm-hmm. Like, I love, it, there's nothing that they've done that I haven't been super impressed with and, and enjoyed. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just so much fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, now that we got all that away and we're fangirling over Marvel, um, <laughs> I've got, a, I've got let's see, 10 or so topics we can overrate, underrate, because I've always wanted to do this with you. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, the first topic. Mountain Dew, overrated, underrated. Okay, so for me, and I'm probably going to upset some people with this one, totally overrated. It's right? so overrated. It's not dude, that good. It's not, man. Like, here's the deal. I'm going to – like, if I go into a restaurant and they don't have a Diet Coke yeah, and they're serving, like, Pepsi products, I'm going to see if they have a Diet Mountain Dew. And if they don't, mm-hmm. I'm just going straight water. Like, I want the yeah. caffeine more than anything. I'm a caffeine addict. It's bad. Like, I'm one of those dudes who get grumpy when, like, I don't have my, my caffeine, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, dude, I'm such a diet Dr. Pepper guy. Like, the Mountain Dew just doesn't even tickle my fancy anymore. Like, it's just not not there. Yeah. Now, those, like, little off branches, like kickstarts and rise and stuff, I mean, I can handle them. They're not as yeah. bad. But yeah. just straight Mountain Dew is not good. No, it's I, it's syrupy and nasty. Uh, it makes your – it's like you got a film inside your mouth when you get done yeah. with it. It's nasty. Yeah. Yeah. And it, they never get it right. Now, if you have a good one, like you go to a restaurant and they've got their stuff is good, yeah, maybe. But yeah. I'm not going to chance it. So, no. Oh, time, dude, like mixes at restaurants, like oh, mixes, yeah. mixes it. Yeah, like you got to have the right mix. Like there's certain, yes. like here, Chick Fil A Diet Coke. Yeah, it's the it's like one of the best. But anyway, well, I'm sorry, I digress. Like McDonald's go Sprite. McDonald's mm. Sprite slaps. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Oh yeah. Yeah, like I don't even know. I'm not a big Sprite fan, but like if they say it's a McDonald's Sprite, I'm like, yeah. all right, like I'll drink yeah. it. I'll drink it. Yeah, mm-hmm. oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> the next topic, I know the Super Bowl was like a week ago, but Joe yeah. Burrow. Dude, I am. I, Joe Burrow is so, so, so highly underrated. It's not even funny. Like that dude, 
I really believe this. Now that Tom Brady is gone, yeah, I see Joe Burrow being – I wouldn't say Tom Brady. I don't think there's ever going to be another Tom Brady. Tom Brady is Tom Brady. But I definitely do see him rising to the ranks of that level of quarterback. Dude, He, mm-hmm. you just don't count him out. You never count him out. He's so yeah. good. And then plus he's just got swag like nobody else. He's yeah. like – he's as cool as a freaking ceiling fan, dude. Like I love him. Like he's awesome. He's definitely confident, and this was basically his rookie season because he only got to play, like, what, three his rookie season? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, he finally gets a shot. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah. Next one. This is the new Conor McGregor, not the old one about Jose Aldo okay. and all that. The yeah, new yeah. one, like the 175 Conor McGregor. Yeah. Man. <sighs> I'm going to say adequately rated right now. Like, he's right where he needs to be. I don't think he's under. I don't think he's over. Because Connor, like Joe Burrow, you never mm-hmm. count him out. Yeah. I mean, he's still a highly skilled fighter. Now, do I believe that Connor is pound for, fa- pound for pound one of the greatest ever? I really don't. I truly don't believe that. I trash think talkers, that, maybe. Oh, trash talk. That's what yeah, I was going to yeah, say. Now, yeah. as far as being like a showman and as far as being – Somebody who can back up what he's saying, absolutely. But, like, I think what we're seeing now is a Connor who is going to have to completely reimagine himself. Like, he's yeah. going to have to go back to the basics of fighting, go back to the basics of, of you know, what he does and what he does best, mm-hmm. which is bring the whole package together, being a trash talker, getting it. And I think the big thing is that Connor's good, but he's also really good at getting in people's heads. Yeah. I think Connor can win a fight before he ever gets in the octagon because he gets people so thrown off kilter that they want to come in there and they want to do something crazy like trying to just swing and knock his head off, and he yeah. finesses right in there and knocks them out. And that's what he did to Dustin Poirier the first time. Mm-hmm. He did it to Aldo. I mean, he's done it to so many fighters. He gets in their head. And like Nick Diaz, great example. Or Nate Diaz. No, Nick. Yeah, Nick Diaz. When he fought Nick Diaz, he couldn't get in Nick's head. And yeah. Nick beat him. Like, and so, I don't know, man. I mean, I'm really excited to see his return. What I would love to see is a Michael Chandler versus mm-hmm. Conor McGregor fight. Yeah. I think that fight right there is going to do two dramatic things in the UFC. If Conor wins, it shows that Michael Chandler never deserved to be in the UFC. Mm-hmm. If Michael Chandler wins, it shows that Conor, I think, has lost his edge yeah. and that. Connor may just not be as good as he ever was before. But the thing is that I respect both of those fighters so much. Like Michael Chandler is a total badass. I love him. The dude's an athlete, an absolute freaking killer. Mm -hmm. And I think that he's one of the greatest fighters of all time. I also think the same thing about Conor McGregor. But that fight right there, that's like the ultimate deciding factor. And then whoever wins that one fights the loser of of Gaethy and um, Oliveira. And then, then we got to set another yes. title shot on our hands. And then we've got that new guy, Islam, that's come out. He just won the yeah. other night. Mm-hmm. And I think I think we're looking at a at a Khabib 2.0 with that guy. I mean, you Probably. got Khabib in his corner, and like mm-hmm. he's like a freaking chimpanzee, dude. He grabs a hold of you. You're not getting away from him. He's gonna choke yeah. you to death. Like it's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, all them Russian guys, they're like grappling gods like yes. if you get on the ground you're not getting up you're done oh i tell yeah. people all the time i'm like do not mess with a dude whose name has more syllables and more yeah. consonants than it does vowels and has a neck beard it's like if you walk up and he's like my name is blah blah blah, blah and he's got a neck beard you better just get out get out of his yes. way because he's coming through you yeah yeah <laughs> have you seen those pictures of uh conor mcgregor on instagram that like if he was like a good six one six two he'd be like he'd be to, yeah one hundred percent. He's, he's huge, dude. Out. He's he's huge. Well, I mean, dude, those guys. I, I tell people all the time, you know, weight cutting really puts those guys in a in a a form or a shape that I think is unnatural for a lot of them. Yeah. I mean, because like you look at Dustin Poirier or Connor and how they actually work out, dude, they ought to be jacked. I mean, they ought to be walking around mm-hmm. one ninety five, two hundred pounds. I mean, because they still are five eleven, five you know, six foot tall, six one. I mean, dude, I'm six four and weigh two thirty five. I mean, yeah. that dude's working out every single day and is like, you know, a beast. He's me, but all muscle. Like, you can't yeah. be that big and not be giant. And so, yeah, no, dude, he's, he's looking good. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. Like, you know, Poirier said he's never going back down to middleweight again. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, he wants to fight up. 
And so I think you'll see the same thing happen with Connor. And I, th- I believe a lot of it may be age. Like, yeah. you get to a certain point where, man, like, it is hard for you, you know, in, the, in your 30s and mid-30s to just weigh a certain amount. Like, your body yeah. just gets bigger. And so I think these dudes are like – they're having to adjust to the fact that they're getting just, I wouldn't say older. It's not like they're old men, but they're getting to a point in their life where it's just physically impossible for them to weigh 165. You know what I mean? So it's going to be interesting, dude. The UFC has grown on me. Like I am such a huge fan now. Like I used to not be, but like after COVID and not having any sports to watch and UFC was all I had, I'm like, I'm head, like I'm drowning in it now. Like I'm watching all the fights. I'm into all of it. It's going to be great. Now that we're talking about UFC for a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Sugar Sean O'Malley, overrated, underrated. He is totally underrated. Oh, uh, he is has so much style to his. It like okay, is he'll like wobble him if he would go yeah. for the knockout, he'd win like that. That, but he yep. does it in style, and it's still yeah. like the best thing ever. So yeah. I tell you what, I believe he's doing is just like a boxer. So if you watch mm-hmm. boxing. What boxers do is they don't ever fight. Like, they'll fight somebody just slightly better than them that they know that they can beat. And they'll do that a whole lot. And then, like, finally, it's like through these small incremental steps, they'll finally get to that person that they're fighting for the world title. Yeah. UFC, that doesn't happen a lot. Like, you see these big jumps in, like, you know, talent. So, like, you got, you know, Connor will fight this guy, this guy, and then it's like, oh, he's fighting for a world title. What I think Sean's doing is he's just taking those small yeah. incremental steps and getting like two, three percent better every single time till finally he's going to be almost impossible to beat when he finally gets to that, that pinnacle of what he's wanting to do. And then plus he'll have like this crazy career with this crazy record where like mm-hmm. he'll be fighting for the title and be like 31 and one. Yeah. You know, and then it's like he's a legend at that point. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I think. Even though he's like still young, I think he's the money fight right now Absolutely. in that weight division. Yes, one hundred percent. Absolutely, and like, he's got dude, cool wanna, hair too. Oh heck yeah, he does. Like, dude, if I could <laughs> yes. have, I'm thinking about I'm gonna I'm gonna dye the beard and just yeah. and braid it up and do all the colors like he does. I think it'd be badass. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about what uh, Jimmy Houston said: how you grow it out in the front, and then he grows yeah, it out. He grows it out in the yeah. back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, dude, Jimmy was awesome. Jimmy's the man. Like. <laughs> I tell everybody, like, you ever see Jimmy Houston out, just go walking up to him and talk because, like, he'll talk your ear off. He's such a cool dude. I seen him at the FLW at Lake Washita or Lake Hamilton, one of the two, because they were mm-hmm. back-to-back, I mm-hmm. think, one, two years. And mm-hmm. I, we went up and uh, watched a seminar of his, and he was flipping a spinnerbait with no hook, which it had yeah. a hook. And he yeah. hooks into a chair and, like, yeah. About pulls this dude out of his seat. It was hilarious. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Yeah, he's – man, and that laugh. I mean, that laugh is, like, the most genuine mm-hmm. thing. I mean, he's just – he's yeah. such a good dude. He's – I, I love being with him. It was a – it was an absolute honor to get to know Jimmy and, and not be able to call him my friend. He's, he's an awesome guy. Yeah, and how cold was that water when you had to get in and push the boat? Dude, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad, honestly, man. That was crazy, though, because, like, you know, it hadn't rained in, like – I don't know what they like 15 weeks or something yeah. like that. And so like the water, you know, water was low and all that, but it was funny cause Jimmy was like, no, you don't have to get out. Da, 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 da. I was like, no, I'm getting out. We're getting in here. We're going to go yeah. catch these fish. And mm. so, yeah, it was, it was good, man. And to be able to catch it like toads on a spinnerbait with Jimmy Houston, that, that had to be cool. Oh dude, that's exactly what I said. So I was flipping that jig, catching him on that jig and, I said, I just got to pick up a spinnerbait and catch one on a spinnerbait because I'm with Jimmy Houston. Yeah. And, like, literally picked up the spinnerbait first cast, caught that big one that I caught. And I was like, mm. all right, I can die a happy man now. Like, yeah. this is, you know, pinch me. I think I'm, I don't think I'm awake. Like, this is a yeah. dream. I mean, it's that, just that would be crazy. Awesome. Yeah, he's so cool, man. I mean, he's just such a cool guy. I, I love being with him. Yeah. The next one on the overrated, underrated, mounting bass, like – what you have behind me. These are not mine. They're Ray Dukes. He was a friend of my dad's. Yeah. He gave them to us. Mounting bass. Overrated, underrated. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say are we talking about taking the, the living bass and killing it, or are we talking about taking pictures and making an accurate mount? We can do both. So I believe killing the bass yeah. is 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 slightly I would say it's overrated. Yeah. I say taking pictures of the bass is definitely underrated. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Now, 
I'll get into some ethics with you here because you know I love a good ethics talk. Yeah. I think killing bass is fine. Like I think people I think people get really, really offended at killing a bass for no reason. Mm-hmm. You know, it is it, I got a license that says I can keep five of them. And if I want to keep five of them and I want to eat them, then that's my right to do so. And it's food and it's that whole ethical yeah. conversation. But I also believe that you know, it, it highly depends on the situation that you're in, the scenario that you find yourself in, all those things. And so, like, an, let's take, for an example, an OHIV. Yeah. Okay? I think if you go down there to OHIV and you catch a 15-pounder and you kill that fish, you're just being a douchebag. Like, mm-hmm. you know, there's so much research that has gone into, you know, studying those fish and making sure those fish have babies and, like, that the freaks have freaks that have freaks. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so, like, you're just, like, taking out of the system – of something that's so awesome, something that can be good for other people. Whereas it's like, if you're old Johnny boy, he's like, man, I got me five, 12 inches here and they're all going to taste good. You know what yeah. I mean? You go home and fry them up, then do that. You know what I mean? But no, I love mounts, man. I think they're cool. I've never personally mounted a bass. Um, yeah. probably cause I'm just like cheap and I don't want to pay somebody to do that for me. But like, man, you know, it's, I think cool too. Like those behind you obviously are probably sentimental. You know what I mean? Like they have some sentimental value. And like my dad has some of my, my papaws or his papaws. Um, they're just sentimental. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. my dad has his personal best, um, not the nine pounder he caught with me and Caleb, yeah. but the, a seven, a big seven pounder. And what happened with that fish was he caught it and she ended up dying. And so he got her mounted because she was already dead. You know, I mean, it was just one of those things. It was the end of that bass's life. The stress of catching her killed it. And so he got it mounted because it was cool. You know, won a tournament, that kind of stuff. So I think it's like like underrated and overrated at the same time. I think it's all about the situation you find yourself in. You know what I mean? But, like, the actual killing of the bass, man, the ethics behind that, like, I I think that killing a bass is just like killing anything else. You know, it's it's – your ethical dilemma to get through and how your stance on that is, is what your stance on it is for me, kill it. You know what I mean? Because it's your right to kill it, but all at the same time, think about what you're doing with it and it, and really think through, is this the responsible thing to do? Is this the ethical thing to do? Is this the, you know, whatever X factor that you can think of? So that's kind of my opinion on that. I know this summer we were, um, it was me and my dad, we were out, you know, that time of year um, when you could just throw a top water out, catch about like, 40, 50 Kentuckys. Yeah. We, caught, yeah. we c- kept about maybe five or six, and I cooked yeah. them up and cleaned them and ate them on camera. Yeah. And these people were like getting mad at me for yeah. like taking them out and cooking them. And yeah. they were some guys I fished with in a tournament. And yeah. I think it's fine if you, it's like a one day thing or like you're camping mm-hmm. on a bank and you catch fish and mm-hmm. that's all you have to eat. But, like, if you're in a tournament and you're having a haul, but, like, across the lake and you're letting yeah. them out and watching them die, like, on the bank like it's hot, I yeah. think that's that's probably where I would draw the line. Yeah. And I've seen people do it. Like, some of the tournaments we fish, I mean, people don't care. Yeah. And so. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things, dude, like – people can get as mad as they want to, but what they have to realize is just <laughs> – it's like people who get mad at me for – you know, I'll toss a fish back hard sometimes, you know, just like yeah. drop it, you know, and people get mad at me. And I'm like, oh, but the stabbing it in the face with a piece of metal and jerking it into a yeah. world where it can't breathe mm-hmm. or see and then sticking it in a box and beating its brains out all the way across the lake is the is the easy part, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, like, yeah, dude, it's – it's again, it's it's one of those things I think it's a miss – people are kind of misinformed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the act of fishing alone is as violent or more violent than the killing and the eating of the fish. You know yeah. I mean? For thousands upon tens of thousands of years, we've caught fish to eat them. Like, mm-hmm. that was the main goal. It wasn't until, like, even, like, the past 30 years, 20 years, man, that people really started to go – oh, maybe we need to keep some of these fish in the population. Maybe we need to have more ethical and more sustainable practices to keeping big fish alive. You know what I mean? And And I think the only reason why people thought that is because the fishing pressure got high and they couldn't catch them. Yep. And that's the only reason. People started to readjust their thinking about like, oh, man, like 
like this isn't going to be here if we don't do something about it. You know what yeah. I mean? And I, man, for me, I, I think it's so situational. Keeping fish mm-hmm. and eating fish is so situational to what you've got going on, the lake that you're fishing on, what your purpose is, and those kind of – I mean, like there's lakes around here, man, that I wouldn't think a second thing about keeping five fish and eating them because it is not yeah. in any way going to hurt the population. There's more fish in that lake than you can ever imagine. But then there's other places that I, I know for a fact I'm – catching fish and re-catching them and you know catch and release yeah. works that i don't want to take those fish out of that population and i don't even want to take them out of that population in a tournament you know what i mean because yeah. i want to make sure those fish are there not only for me but for somebody else to, to enjoy it. so it's very yeah. situational man i mean like dude that's a lot that's a rabbit hole right there like that's mm-hmm. a that's an alex Road rabbit hole we could go so far <laughs> down it's crazy <laughs> have you ever eaten a smallmouth yeah dude they're muddy tasting really are they like yeah mud like channel cats and like not not that bad but it's just kind of like a like a muddier kind of taste i think it's because they eat so many crawdads like ours do anyway and i think they really like hammer on crawdads and so my i actually had my papa caught a few one time just not very big ones but you know keepers and like you could definitely tell the difference between it and a piece of crappie or it and a piece of like walleye it just kind of had a more muddy taste to it yeah, and uh, one time we went and ate hybrids out of the river and mm-hmm. cooked them up. Those are good. They yeah. are, dude. Yes. If you catch a hybrid, I mean, like, fry it up, and it's hard to tell it between it and anything else you'd eat, man. Yeah, and I know a couple of these tournaments, we caught some walleyes, and we put them on one side of the live well and then put our bass on the other side, and we took those home and cooked them and ate them. Yeah. Good. And so what's – you know, what's a, a walleye is delicious, but what's funny is, like, What's the actual difference between keeping the walleye and keeping the bass other than it's just a different species? You know what I mean? Like that's the thing. Like we, us as bass fishermen, literally like trout, maybe like there's a lot of trout fishermen that don't keep them, but really bass fishing specifically, we're like the only people that get our panties in a wad about keeping and eating bass. Like everybody else is out there just like straight to the grease with them. You know what I mean? So it's very, it's funny, man. It's like, it's a funny concept. Yeah. The next one, we already talked about it a little bit, but crappie fishing. Dude, I say way underrated. Mm, I underrated. think I, I think crappie fishing, man, like I really believe if I get into it, I'm going to love it so much that I'm going to yeah. do it too much. And, like, I got a bunch of buddies who get the forward-facing sonar, you know, live scope or whatever it is, and, like, they turn into crappie fishermen because they realize how many crappie live in the lake, and it's just like – and they're easy to catch, and they're fun to catch. Yeah. And you can eat them like like it doesn't get even. It's the perfect storm. They're fun to catch, easy to catch, and you can eat them. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. And I know old Josh Jones. He came from crappie fishing into catching big bass. And yeah, no, yeah, it's nobody crazy. ever watched him crappie fishing until. And I'll tell you something else. I truly believe this. Crappie fish is an underrated in the fact that you can find a lot of giant bass crappie fishing. Yeah, because some of the biggest bass I've ever seen caught have crappie in the back of their throat or they spit up crappie i truly believe like you want to go find some true freak giants like that boy josh jones is catching go find the crappie man and so crappie fishing can help you find some big bass i believe yeah and i mean i can see here in a couple years like a whole googan squad for crappie fishing that would be hard yes yeah right that'd be awesome dude huh my what see this is what happens we're trying to record a podcast podcast here everybody's listening on podcast form it's, it's listening to this podcast that's bethany rudd that's interrupting me monster bass email bethany or bethany at monsterbass.com to complain i just need your credit card oh uh, what, what are you buying i'm paying bills okay well that's that's good i guess that's good i guess remember bethany at monsterbass.com everybody email and complain yeah, yeah I, I do i think i think i can do your whole ad spill like just off the top of my head because i'm listening glad. To all the podcasts i mean good. Good. Yes. that's awesome dude i appreciate it when one podcast ends i say in my head do you like this podcast and yeah you know what i'm saying and, yeah. do you like this podcast do you want to make your own well anchors for you <laughs> yes i do that every time uh, and so yeah that's great dude well the next one wwe slash what's the new one awe yeah, I don't know the new one. Yeah. Dude, I'm a classics man. Like, listen, when I was a kid, The Rock was the man. Like, not Dwayne Johnson, not what he is now. Yeah. Like, the true rock. Like, can you smell what The Rock's cooking? <laughs> the eyebrow. You know, yeah. man, Stone Cold. Like, all those dudes. 
Fun fact, you probably know this, and you probably heard me say this before. Kane is the mayor of Knoxville where I live. Is he really? He is, dude. Dang. Kane it Kane <sighs> is the mayor of Knoxville. Heck yeah. Dang. You could take yep. him out fishing for a video. You know how cool that'd be? Dude, I've reached out. Like, I reached out. I want him. I, I want him on the podcast first. Like, I want him on the podcast. It's like to be like, "Hey, I'm not a weirdo. I'm not going to kill you." But yeah. like, I think what I'm going to do though is I'm going to reach out to like our like bureau of you know like travel or like visiting Knoxville, and I'm going to be like, "Listen, yeah. I want to take cane fishing and see like if I can get him out on the boat with me. I think it'd yeah. be super fun. No, you'd have like bodyguards in the back of the boat with you, and just right, to make sure right. you don't do nothing stupid. Yeah, yeah, it'd be awesome. <laughs> So now, I know this is one of your all-time favorites to throw, jigs. Overrated, oh, underrated. Man, totally underrated. Totally <laughs> underrated. It is just such a powerful tool steal. Like, I think people – I had this conversation yesterday. And what was funny – it's so funny how, like, the world works. But, like, yesterday morning I was in, on Lake Placid, Florida, Dragging a Carolina rig, and then yesterday night I was back in Knoxville, Tennessee. So you know how that is. It's yeah. just a weird feeling. But yesterday I was standing on the boat with Mr. Sam Moore, who did my video on my crankbait, does a lot of monster bass shoots. Awesome dude. Um, and we were talking about like how we truly believe with all the new stuff that's coming out that there's going to be like this rise of old school baits come back. And I believe that's going to be stuff like the jig and the spinner bait and the Carolina rig and just like old school lures that like everybody's gone away from because there's better, you know, better things to throw now or newer things to throw. Right. And I think a jig is one of them, man. I mean, I know for me, a jig has become such a prominent tool in the past couple of years. Like it hasn't before. And I mm -hmm. truly believe it's because everybody's throwing a creature bait. So now a jig is something that the fish just don't see as much. Yeah. And so I really believe, dude, the jig is just so versatile, man. It's so and underrated. Then I know, like, some areas you can go throw a chatterbait and then not catch anything, and then somebody come up behind you throwing a spinnerbait and, and just jack wreck them. Yes. Yes. And, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I don't get it sometimes, but, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy, something man. I've never it's, seen before. Yeah. So, I mean. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think jigs – I think a lot of this – I mean, like, even a Carol – I hate throwing a Carolina rig, but, dude, he catches giants. I mean, and I think yeah. it's just because – they don't see it, you know, and so, yeah, man, I, I've definitely uh, – I'm spending more time with a spinnerbait in my hand, with a jig in my hand, you know, even though I do love my bladed jigs. I mean, you know, I love my bladed jigs. I got all kinds of Japanese ones. We got a new one coming out. I, mm, I can't talk about it. Can't talk about it, but it's going hey, to be when, awesome. When's it coming out? We're not sure yet. So, um, okay. when I say we, I can't even tell you who the we is either. Um <laughs> Are you like partnering it's, up with like some JDM something? No, like no, coming no. Out? This is somebody I work. This is somebody I work with. So this is yeah. a company that I work with, um, and so there's a new one coming out, and it's it's completely different than anything you've ever seen before, and it's gonna be awesome. So that's all I can say about it. Yeah, I know. I saw. Uh, I think it was this morning because I hadn't got on Instagram in a while. But I saw yeah. the new 1.5 yard coming out with. Yeah, and I was excited for that. that Heck yeah, that, dude. Yes. Yeah, the new colors are going to be awesome, dude. Like, yeah. you know, we got my four colors, my primary ones, and then these are four brand new ones. And, like, they're just, man, like, the story behind them is cool because, I mean, most of those colors are just things that my dad used to have custom painted, you know, things we used to throw and they've gone away. And I just want to bring them back to the world so everybody's got them and can use them. And so the first four were so successful that we're like, all right, well, let's do four more. And so, yeah, man, super excited about them. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to get them out there and everybody to check them out. So it's going to be good stuff. Yeah. Mm. I know y'all had this guy on y'all's podcast, uh, the owner of – or the maker of Z-Man. Yeah. So we're doing Z-Man lures, overrated, underrated. Yeah. Man, I think that really underrated. Like, I, I, I've not spent enough time with them to really like learn the Elastec and stuff. But I mean, dude, obviously there's something to it. I mean, people really like it. And the Elastec material is so cool. I think the one thing about Z-Man that kind of interests me the most though, is just the chatterbait. I mean, like, yeah. dude, like if it wasn't for Z-Man, we wouldn't have the chatterbait. I mean, obviously, you know, Z-Man didn't come up with the chatterbait. Yeah. They bought the idea for licensed the idea from a guy who come up with, I forgot the whole story about it. 
but like they're they're very transparent about that. Yeah. They're like, hey, we got this idea from this guy, and we just helped to bring it to life. But man, if it wasn't for Z Man, we wouldn't have a jackhammer, a chatterbait. Yeah. You know, mm. all these just like you know the bladed jig just wouldn't even be what it is. And so I think for that fact alone, then plus the last take is a really cool technology, extremely underrated. Yeah, when I listened to that, that podcast, I went and I researched how the blade was connected to the head and like yeah. what was different between Strike King or yeah. some or like a Bass Pro Chatterbait and Zima. Like that stuff's really cool. Yeah, and dude, like, it's awesome. Yeah, and how the other guys got around doing that and yeah, it's nothing like a uh, what you would call it, jackhammer. Yeah, it's, yeah, nothing, it's nothing. I mean, dude, it's so crazy, man. I mean, it's like. You know, that's what's cool about, like, the JDM stuff is the Japanese, you know, American patents don't apply to them. And yeah. so they can do direct-to-head connections just like a chatterbait is. And it's like, you know, it's just, dude, the whole category of bladed jig mm-hmm. is like a normal jig in the fact that it is yeah. very complicated. And there's so mm-hmm. many different things you can do with it. And I think, for me, you know, I'm just starting to scratch the surface of what it really is to throw a bladed jig. And I'm excited to just get better at it. You know, I mean, everybody like, they're like, dude, you're so good at throwing a bladed jig. I'm like, no, I still suck at it. Like, Brent Heights good at throwing a bladed jig. I've just figured out how it works for me. Now I want to figure out how I can make it even more effective than it already is. Yeah, I want to be able to, like, go out there like Brian Thrift when he won that tournament on the uh, jackhammer and and jack him. Dude, it's fun, man. And what's crazy is, I'll say this about a bladed jig. I have not seen water cold enough to not be able to catch him on it. Yeah. Like it's it's one of those like I was throwing it uh, as what was it last week? Forty eight degree water, and I caught a fish on a bladed jig. It was the biggest fish I caught all day. You know, it wasn't a giant, but it's one of those things like in catching a bunch of little ones. I whip out a bladed jig and start cranking it around and bow mm-hmm. up on a big one. You know what I mean? So, dude, it's just throw it. I think the biggest thing is lock it in your hand and go throw it and like. Once you kind of figure out, like, oh, the little nuances of it, then it's just yeah. smash fest after that. So, yeah, I remember the first time I ever threw it, uh, like a jackhammer, I had this like toothpick of a rod and I cast yeah. it out there and it's sitting here vibrating yeah. my whole arm. Yeah, and, dude, it's awesome. So, it's awesome. I had to go get me like a lose seven three swim bait rod and had to yeah. kind of throw it. And, yeah, dude, I'm telling you, the big thing about the, the bladed jigs is like those glass, those glass, those composites this composite yeah. and if you've not checked it out yet i've been throwing mine it's the jordan lee signature series by abu garcia mm-hmm. there's a seven four bladed jig rod and mm-hmm. dude i mean like listen i've i've thrown a lot of you know i mean i've gone through a lot of yeah. different rods trying to find a bladed jig rod and i mean like if they were like to say alex we want you to make a bladed jig rod i would just make that rod yeah. And just be, I mean, like Jordan Lee already did it with his signature shoes. Like that's the one you need. Like yeah. really awesome rod. I mean, it's just, and that's the thing about those bladed jigs. So I had it explained to me one time, and I was talking to Sam Moore about this yesterday too. Why you want that slower action rod, that more parabolic bend, is mm-hmm. because that big blade is in the front of that thing. You know, obviously going back and forth. So when that bass comes up behind it and it eats it, if your rod's too fast of an action that blade will hit the back of that fish's mouth and its natural instinct is to open its mouth and that bladed jig will pop out. So that yeah. slower action lets you load that, that bladed jig in there and it doesn't pop the back of its mouth. It just kind of pushes into it and lets that hook go in. And mm-hmm. I didn't realize that. I actually learned that from Brett Hyatt. I saw him at ICAST one year and I went walking up and I was like, explain to me the theory behind the, the more moderate action rods, the glass action rods. And he explained that to me, man. And I was like, that makes yeah. a ton of freaking sense. So it's, it's just cool, man. It's, it's such a deep category to get into. Yeah. Um, next one. Okay. Do you know who Lojo is? Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. His beard versus your beard. Oh, bro. Listen, I'd text Lojo right now and tell him, okay? Yeah. His beard don't even hold a candle to mine, poor thing. God bless him. You know, when we're in the South, you know, you say God bless him. It means anything you say after that, it's okay. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But God bless him. No, he has a good beard. He has a decent beard. Yeah. It's subpar at best. It's subpar yeah. at best, but no. Yeah, I mean, any man with a beard, I got to respect him. Lojo's an awesome dude, and he does have a good beard. But let's all be honest. Yeah. We know who has the, has the prettier beard here. It has to be yes, me. So, I mean, oh, yeah, I'm there's sorry. winners and there's winners and losers in everything, and just happens I'm the winner in that category. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, he does. You do have a better name than him because I figured out what his name was like 
a week ago. It's like oh, Lauren. Lauren, yeah, Lauren Johnson, yeah. That he, that's such a big dude. And they have a name like Lauren, yeah, yes, yeah. No, Lojo's a cool dude, man. I, I like him a whole lot. We uh, we never did get a chance to fish together. He he was coming to town a few times and the schedules mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. But no, man, he makes good content. He's a good dude. Yeah. I'm glad he's getting to kind of do his thing with the Googans and, you know, live his dream out the way he wants to live it. I, th- I yeah. think it's really awesome. So I'm not trying to de- like dog on Lojo, but your podcast is way better than his. I'm just <laughs> ah, well, you know, man, it's like I tell everybody, there's people who like Joe Rogan. There's people who don't. I'm a Joe Rogan fan. Yeah. So, so you're an Alex Rhodes fan and I appreciate it, man. You're actually the guy who got me to start listening to Joe Rogan. Oh yeah, yeah. He's yeah. dude. He's awesome, isn't he? He is. Yeah, like, yeah dude. It's. I remember going yeah. sw- scrolling through his like Spotify and fi- trying yeah. to find names that I know of, and then I yeah, yeah. Sc- stumbled up on Chris Stapleton, and so I listened yeah. to that one, and then I yeah. listened to the what you call him, Elon Musk one. Yeah. And then yeah, it was just there. there yeah, dude. Me. He's he's such. I mean, like I am fascinated by his stuff. Like he is just so. I mean, like, it's one of those things, man, for me that, like, I am uh, – he says it a lot, and I, and I say it too. Like, I'm not married to my ideas. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not married to any one idea. I'm always willing to learn. I'm always willing to listen. And, like, I've listened to a whole podcast with him of people that I totally disagree with everything that they say. But, like, I truly believe if you want to disagree with something, you better know why you disagree with it. And so yeah. listening to a person you disagree with is going to teach you why you disagree with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah, he's awesome, dude. I, I love me some some Joe Rogan. Yeah. So the final uh, overrated, underrated, Alex Rudd fishing. Oh man, I'm totally overrated. I'm like the most overrated person ever. Okay, let me tell you something. I am the most uncool person that you will ever meet. Like I am just a loser. Like I am just I'm I'm a dork, man. Like everybody mm-hmm. thinks like this whole YouTube thing has like turned. I, like people think I'm a celebrity or something, dude. I'm just a guy. I, I just, know. I'm. I know. I was all giddy when you uh, DM'd me back. I was like a schoolgirl, dude. I love it, buddy. I'm so glad. Like, <laughs> dude, man, I just want you. I want everybody to realize, like, I am just a dude who loves fishing, and like, yeah. I put my I put my love out there on YouTube, and it's like, you know, it's grown into something, and you know, it's mm-hmm. like. It's been a blessing in my life, man. I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, life is about to change in a very dramatic way here in a couple months, and everybody's going to see what's going to happen. And like, yes, I just want to fish, and then they're like all attacking countries and stuff. I just want to lift, and if school gets canceled, I'll be fine. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but like, no, I'm just saying in my life, things are going to change here in a few months, you know, and and everybody's going to see what it is. But it's like, man, I just, I just love fishing. I just love fishing. It's all I want to do. It's, it's all I want to do. It's just want to go fishing, and I record it, and I put it out there, whether I suck or whether I'm awesome. And I just, I man, I just want everybody. Like, if anybody ever sees me out, if you want to reach out to me, like just like you did, man, like message mm-hmm. me. I will message yeah. you back. Like, I have no preconceptions, no notions. I don't think I'm any. Like, I know I'm not a celebrity. I'm just a guy who loves fishing, who yeah. happens to have a YouTube channel that has allowed me to put myself out there and like, yeah, people dig it. And so I dig that they dig it and we're all here. It, we're here while it happens. I mean, that's what yeah. it is. Speaking of life changing. Um, how's the new boat? Oh dude. <laughs> it is awesome. Is it is it? awesome. So when's this podcast coming out? Um, I'm going to try to work on it tonight, maybe tomorrow, maybe in a couple days. Maybe in a couple of days, man. I would love to. I would love to put it out there what I got, but I'm kind of, kind of. I just don't know. I just don't know. I may hold on to it. We'll talk about it after we get done. I'll let you know what okay. I got when we get done. But dude, I'll put it this way: I had like expectations of how good it was going to be. Yeah. It blew those expectations completely out of the water. Yeah. Like, man, I am so. I took my boat out today, actually, and uh, like I took it literally out just to ride around, like just to yeah. drive her and kind of get a better feel for her. And uh, it's, it's she's a, she's a beast. She's an absolute beast. That's awesome. Yeah, I know we have an aluminum Ranger, one of the one eighty eight C things. Yeah, and yeah. Like, I wish we had hydro deck because I sometimes when it gets hot, I'll fish barefooted. Yeah, and that stuff can get hot and very yeah. uncomfortable. So the yeah. only thing I wish we had different was hydro deck. But that's it. yeah, yeah. I'm I'm looking at the boat I have now. Actually, uh, 
didn't come with carpet, but it also doesn't have sea deck. Yeah. And so uh, I got, Sam Moore knows some people. Uh, he's reaching out to him for, or I'm going to reach out to him. He's going to give me their contact about putting mm-hmm. some stuff in the boat like that. But I'm kind of kind of figuring if I want to or if I don't. I'm not sure yet. I'm just going to have yeah. to kind of live with it for a while. As it sits right now, I love it. And so we're yeah. just going to see what happens. You know what I mean? Because I'm a, I'm a barefoot fisher too, dude. Like everybody's like, you know, we don't want to look at your feet. I'm like, well, then don't watch my videos because, I mean, I got some big old feet. You can't hide these things. <laughs> like if it's – like if it's 60 degrees and above i'm taking my shoes off and my socks off but Heck if it's yeah. anywhere under i'm wearing my boots Heck yeah I'm, yeah so yeah. Mm, well let's see i do want to talk about uh kayaks okay yes what do you want to know about them which one for me i'm 16 uh yeah. just getting into a job i interviewed at atwoods not too long ago awesome um, what would be the best budget kayak for me to best find. budget kayak so i'll give you a piece of advice that my buddy chad hoover gave me and you know obviously chad knows a crap ton more about kayaks than i do yeah buy the best possible kayak that you can in your price range mm-hmm. so what that means is you know whatever your budget is on your kayak go and buy the best one you possibly can now that being said looking at budget kayaks across the board man old town obviously makes fantastic kayaks you know, that Topwater 120 PDL, I mean, for the price range, you get everything you could possibly need or want to be able to go out and catch fish in it, have a super stable kayak, and, like, go tournament fish in it. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, I got the freaking battleship now. Like, I got, yeah. you know, my Hobie, she's ridiculous. Like, and I'll be honest with you, I, I tell anybody this, if I didn't have the two old towns to sell to be able to afford that kayak, I would have never bought that kayak because the price range is absolutely ridiculous, but it's for a reason. I mean, that kayak is like, yeah. it's, it's the best thing I've ever been in. It's crazy, but no, man, those top water, those like top water one twenties and the one Oh twos, fantastic kayaks for what they are like. And what I love about them, I think the most is any person like even Bethany, like my wife, she got into a kayak with zero experience and was able to get into that, that one twenty, and she was good as gold. Like she felt yeah. comfortable. She felt like she could stand up. She could pedal easy. Like everything worked for her. And yeah. so I think like that's probably for the price, for the ability to get out there and have a pedal drive and do all that. That'd be the kayak that I would say get. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been looking at one and I mean, I don't know if I want one where I had to like kit or like haul a trailer or like one I yeah. could just strap on the top. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know. But one thing I do want to ask is, how was that encounter at the boat ramp? Dude, that was crazy. It was totally insane. Like, I'll be honest. You know, a lot of people were commenting, like, you know, you didn't say where where you didn't show where you actually threatened to kill you. And the reason I didn't do that is because I knew it would go against YouTube's community guidelines. Like, you can't put that kind of stuff on the internet. But, man, that poor guy, like, I, you know, I think that that was – it was a sad situation more than anything. It was kind of sad to me. You know, everybody from the peanut gallery tells you what they would do. You know, but in my situation, you know, being a, a grown man who carries a firearm all the time, like, you know, that's the last situation that you want to be in. Like, I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't. I will, yeah. you know, you know, mess you know, mess around and find out. But, like, yeah. I don't want to do that. You know, like, I, and so I thought best in that situation, just try to get that guy some help. And when help showed up, he decided he wouldn't want no help. And so he dove in the water. But apparently he's alive. Like, apparently he made it. Um, from everything I heard, he made it out of the water, and I, I don't know what happened to him after that. Hopefully, he got some help. But crazy situation to say the least. Totally you crazy could, situation. You could tell in your video you weren't talking much that your wheels were turning, and you. Oh were, yeah, dude. Yes. The, the old brain, man. I was watching everything that guy was doing. Like I was like, you know, this is a bad situation. Like I need to get as far away from this as possible. You know, in my younger days, I'd have been like. You know, let's throw hands right here, right now. You know, yeah. I joke around like that and stuff. But, like, it's like nowadays I'm like, I got way too much to lose to, like, jack with this guy. Like, let's just go the other direction. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. It's crazy, so, man. I, I don't want anybody to get in that situation. It's not fun. Yeah. The last question that I do have for you, we've been on here for, what, an hour maybe? Yeah, ish. maybe. Who knows? Um, When are you coming back? Oh, bro, March 1st. I'll tell everybody March, that. March 1st? Yeah. Okay, I'm ready. Yep, so that's, tom- that's tomorrow. Bro, that's tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Dude, yeah, I'm so, ready. What yeah. time? 6, 6 p.m. tomorrow night. Video's dropping. Yes, sir. So, I'll be, I'll be we'll there. Be a, 
Yep, and then I'm planning on dropping. I've got videos. So this whole time that I've been off, I've continued to make videos. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, really, this break more for me was it was a strategic break. Um, you know, it was a break for me to be able to get some things lined up that I need to get lined up, some business taken care of I need to get taken care of, um, videos made and scheduled out. And so I've got videos scheduled for the first three weeks of March. It'll be dropping every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. And man, you guys are going to see some fishing videos, some kayak tournament videos, got the new boat to reveal. Just got a yeah. bunch of really cool stuff coming out. So I'm super man, excited I'm, about it. I'm ready for that boat. I mean, I've been yeah. waiting on that thing since, it's awesome, since dude. ever since you said something about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, we'll, I'll talk to you about it and show it to you before we get off right. here after we get off the podcast. It's, it's awesome, man. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Well, thank you for coming on this little old podcast that I got. You know, yeah. I'm trying. Yeah. Hey, dude, yeah. you're doing it. That's all that matters. I tell everybody, I'm like, yeah. there's never, never, uh, you know, everybody's like, well, you know, I'll try one day or, you know, I'll get, you know, I'm yeah. not ready to do it. There's never a perfect time to start. Just start, yeah. just put it out there, man. And like, it's, it'll all start coming together. So, are y'all going to keep doing them Friday Night Lives? We'll be back next Friday, we'll my be man. Be back. Yes, sir. Yep. I'll be there. Yep. All right. Sorry. That's awesome, dude. We're going to have fun, man. Yes, sir. Well, thank you. And I'll be seeing your videos and maybe we could do this again. I don't know. Absolutely. We'll do it again, man. I appreciate everybody that listened. I appreciate you for having me on and it was a good time, man. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. All right I'll let you go. See you. See you. Bye-bye.